Alright, so the Lord gave me a revelation and he gave me some a few things, some insight, and I wanted to share it with you guys. Um for like the last month I've been struggling hard. I've been feeling like it was time for me to leave. But I didn't know if it was coming from my flesh or if it was coming from the Lord. Um, so I prayed on it. I prayed on it. I prayed on it. I prayed on it. And uh, because one thing I don't want to do is be disobedient to the Lord out of exhaustion or weariness. Um, so I felt like I want... I. I it was time for me to leave, but I was still feeling confused. So I asked the Lord to show me a sign. So he showed me a few things just within the last two days. And I wanted to share it with you guys. So I'm just going to get right to it. And um, I think all of us, I mean, this, this goes for all of us, all of us, what we do. Ecclesiastes 3.1 says, There is a time for everything and a season for everything, every activity under the heavens. As we all know, this is a season we're in. And, and, and it's a tough season. It's a season full of uh, trials, tests, tribulations. It's a very hard season. But this season, what the tests and trials and tribulations, and, and here it is. So here's what the Lord showed me as well. There's going to be tests and trials no matter where we go in life. And I tell the boys this all the time. The things you struggle with here. Just because you leave here doesn't mean these things will stop. You're still going to face these things out there in the world as well. So we got to slow down on um, wanting to leave because we face certain things that we don't like. All right. So James 1, 2 and James 1, 3 says... Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Mm. So as we're facing these hard times, these hard trials, it's a season, the season that's testing us, that's building our faith and giving us perseverance to we're getting prepared for um, the things that are to, to come other seasons and, and we don't and we need to recognize that that way we could feel blessed and we could be in this op, live in this season joyful because we're being prepared by the Lord instead of being down and uh, being miserable Romans 5, 3 and Romans 5, 4 says, Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope. So this is a full season of the Lord just sculpting us. Molding us. It's like a boot camp in a way. If we were just living in the world, we won't grow as fast. But since we're in the middle of, of a hard time, we're, we're getting all this. We're building this. We're building a perseverance, character, and hope. It's producing all that. And that's what I said earlier. It says in here, but we also glow. Also glory in our sufferings. So it's a season of molding us. It's a season of strength. The Lord showed me that this, 
I thought I was ready for the world. I thought I was ready to leave. But as I'm sitting these couple days on vacation, I'm amongst the world. And I notice that I have a lot, I have a, a long way to go and a lot to work on still. Because there is a lot more in the world than where we are in this little bubble. So it's a season of strength. We're learning. We're getting, we're getting, the Lord is sculpting us. And then the Lord showed me this scripture. Luke 24, 49. And Jesus is speaking to his disciples. I'm going to send you what my father has promised. But stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. All right. So we are. are so. He's talking about the Holy Spirit. We already have the Holy Spirit. But are we strong enough? And are we mature enough to follow and be led by the Holy Spirit in this world? If we're struggling now, we're going to struggle in the world. So this is a time for strength, a season for strength. And he's telling me to stay in the city until you've been clothed with power from on high. So this is a season of strength and building. So we need to recognize that. We're not being, this isn't because uh, we're not being tortured. We're not being... Um, this isn't, this isn't consequences. This is a true blessing. Because the Lord has so much for us. That, he, that we don't know. But, the, but He knows. And so this is why He's preparing us for those upcoming seasons. And then and the Lord showed me this. John... 10, 11, and John 10, 12. Jesus is saying this. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. What is the hired hand? Jesus says, I'm the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd. It does not own the sheep. What is a hired hand? In the commentary, it says, a hired hand tends the sheep for money. While the shepherd does it for love. We, in this moment, in this season, as the Lord is building us with strength, we are all shepherds. Tending to this flock of children, of teens. A hired hand tends the sheep for money while the shepherd does it for love. We all know what we get paid. And we all know we're not here for the money. We're all here for love. We, us, are shepherd. And this is what Jesus tells us. John 21, 15 through 17. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said. You know that I love you. 
Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Jesus right here tells us to feed my lambs, take care of my sheep, and feed my sheep. And this is what we're doing. We're obeying his word. And we're obeying his will. We're taking care of the, of the sheep. Loving on them. Nurturing them. Caring for them. Helping them. Protecting them. I looked up a shepherd's job description. A shepherd's primary responsibility is the safety and welfare of the flock. The shepherd will graze the animals, herding them to areas of good forage and keeping a watchful eye out for poisonous plants. Think about what we do. Think about it. Listen to the words. Most shepherds take care of the sheep. Although they may, although they may be responsible for goats as well. They often work. Listen to this. They often work in isolated areas. And may work independently except for the essences of their guard dogs. They often work in isolated areas and may work independently. How many of us feel alone? How many of us feel so alone at night? At, at we have not all the time, but at moments. We're taking we're here taking care of the sheep. We're protecting them. Now that I say this, who was a shepherd in the Old Testament? David. David. Right? David was a shepherd before Goliath. First Samuel seventeen thirty four and Sam Samuel seventeen thirty five. But David said to Saul, Your servant has been keeping his father's sheep when a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it, struck it, and rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by its hair, struck it, and killed it. Look how long David was the shepherd. Look at all the, all the things the Lord taught David in that season of shepherding a flock. He taught him, he gave him strength. He taught him courage. He had responsibility. He faced and defeated things he didn't think he could face. This is us right now in this season. 
We are facing these things. But the Lord is teaching us all this. Only one year. But it's hard. Only one year. The Lord is teaching us so much. And what happened to David? He got this opportunity when it was the Lord's time. An amazing opportunity to show who the Lord created him to be. And in this moment, when everybody doubted him, with the Lord's strength, he took out this giant. And then... The Lord honored him. And that's what we're doing. The Lord is getting us ready for our moment. David became king. We're shepherds. And the Lord is getting all ready for our Goliath moment. And then after that moment, he has all these things waiting for us. So with whatever you're feeling right now, we're in an amazing season right now. Be grateful. Be joyful. Because we're shepherds. Attending a flock. Doing the Lord's work. Doing the Lord's work. Ah. And even though He will bless us, even though on earth. If we continue to be obedient, we have this inheritance when we die in heaven, when we get our treasures. Oh, man. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. Praise the Lord, man. Keep digging one day at a time. One day at a time. Only depending on the Lord. Keep digging. Our, your time is coming. The Lord is preparing you for something. All of us. For something special. You guys can do it. All right, I'll be praying for you guys.